Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of uh, Objectivism in France with Gio. How are you doing today, Gio? Fine, and you? Doing very well, thank you. Uh, so we're going to discuss politics uh, in France, what, sort of in the after World War II era, or what, how are we going to frame this discussion? Uh, I, I think we can uh, title it uh, Fifty Shades of Statism. Uh, it's yes. Uh, uh, we uh, last time you brought up the subject of Marine Le Pen, the French right wing, uh, the French far right, and so on. And it was difficult to speak about that because you probably don't have the full context. And I, I was a little bit unsatisfied. So it might be interesting to have an historical overview to have the the context um, of the history of the right, the far right in France. Uh, starting with um, the roots, the, the historical roots, uh, going to the uh, Second World War because it's very important, okay. and uh, what happened until today. All right. So, which one should we start with? Uh, Pétain, De Gaulle. Uh, maybe. Um, Revolution Nationale. Maybe just. No, just uh, nothing. Be uh, nothing. Just now. Oh, okay. Uh, I I think. I, I just I, I will give some uh, introduction, okay? Okay. Um, so in the U.S. and many other country, when one thinks uh, of right versus left, one often thinks of uh, capitalism versus social socialism, ba basically, uh, as I said last time. And I see many Americans watching uh, friends from uh, far away transferring their own framework and thinking it's the same pattern in France. Now, in France, the political spectrum is not really divided according to the same issues. The frame of reference is very different. The common point uh, with the American right wing and the French right wing uh, is probably uh, nationalism, but nationalism in America and nationalism in France are not the same since America is a country of capitalism and have uh, its historical roots in individual rights, while France is the country of socialism somehow and has uh, its historical roots uh, in absolutism and uh, empire and uh, many stuff like that. So, <clears throat> history of, of the right wing in France. First, uh, I'll take you back to the French Revolution at the end of the 18th century, a couple of years after the American Revolution, because this is when the notions of left and right really appeared. So to put it simply, the left was the progressives or the liberals in the largest sense of the term you can imagine, meaning it in included uh, all the people who were in favor of the revolution. So there were uh, uh, at that time some kinds of champions of capitalism and some kinds of champions of socialism, if I may say so. Uh, even if it was not, uh, you know, uh, with this wording at that time, of course. Uh, actually, maybe I should say laissez-faire instead of capitalism, uh, because the word was uh, uh, fashionable at that time. But all all this, those people were in the left, against the monarchy, against the old regime, and for, and for man's right, or claiming to be for man's right, at least. And on the right wing... You had the conservatives, meaning the defenders of the Ancien Regime, the old regime, champions of monarchy against the notion of man's right, or at least uh, skept um, skeptical. And so later in the 19th century in France, you had supporters of the free market. Uh, Frédéric Bastier was one of them. Uh, he was not only a thinker, uh, he was also a deputy at the French parliament. And there were uh, some other guys among the best champions of capitalism in history, I think. But these people uh, were not on the right. They were on the left or the center. For instance, Frédéric Bastiat was first on the left in the French parliament and then uh, on the center. He was never on the right wing, as far as I know. And he was against the right wing, which was uh, authoritarian, protectionist, which often advocated, advocated uh, going back to monarchy. So uh, it's important to, to have this uh, in mind. So then you have the 20th, uh, the 20th century. And here, um, 
the, ch the champions of the free market and of capitalism virtually disappeared in France, completely or virtually disappeared because of the success of socialism in the 20th uh, century. And during the Second World War, the right, as well as the left, but our topic now is the right. Uh, so the, the right was divided in two. Those who collaborated with the Nazi, like Philippe Pétain, the Maréchal Pétain, who was a hero of the First World War. Maybe you can show him uh, 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 on Wikipedia because I sent you the, the, his Wikipedia page. He's up. Yeah. So uh, he was a hero of the First World War, a man highly respected before the Second World War. And uh, on the other side uh, of the right, uh, all in the right wing, but it was two, two different kind of right wing, those who, who resisted against the Nazi, those who fought the Nazi, the Nazi like Charles de Gaulle, the General de Gaulle. Uh, so anyone can check on uh, 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 if they want information, because I think the, the, their uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia pages are very rich, because it, this is historical figures. So you can check on, uh, on Wikipedia. Now, there is a thesis which is extremely co uh, a thesis which is extremely controversial for some people uh, uh, of the far right, which says that there was there was no opposition between those who collaborated and those who fought the Nazi. This is called the sword and the shield thesis. Uh, the resistance fighters were the sword and the collaborators, the collaborationists were the shield, according to this thesis. And Hall wanted to save France against the Nazi. I haven't studied uh, the subject in detail, so I can't really judge. But what I can say is that this thesis is extremely minority and extremely controversial, defended only by some radical uh, right-wing activists, as far as I know. And keep in mind that when I say radical right, uh, they are not defender of the rights and, and of capitalism. Quite the contrary. But anyway, <clears throat> it doesn't uh, so, alter so, uh, no, the clear fact that the government of Pétain, who collaborated with the Nazi, was dictatorial, anti-Semitic. They passed uh, uh, anti-Semitic laws that even the Nazi themselves did not ask for and was destroying uh, the French Republic based uh, on man's rights and dest uh, destroying democracy, etc. And this government, for example, uh, wanted to replace uh, the motto Liberté, Égalité, Fraternité, which means uh, Liberty, Equality, uh, Fraternity, by Travail, Famille, Patrie, which means Work, Family, Fatherland. And they spoke much of authority, obedience, traditions, um, and they called their uh, ideology the National Revolution. So uh, uh, you can check uh, on uh, Wikipedia uh, what, uh, what it is to, to, to get information. Um, and if you don't mind, uh, I would like that we, we stop a little bit on the image that I send you, you know. Uh, it's an image of propaganda uh, from the, the, this government. Uh, uh, the government of Philippe Pétain, Revolution Nationale, and you see uh, an opposition between, uh, you know, uh, the good and the bad, uh, the way they, they, they see it. You have, uh, on one side, you have uh, the, ba the bad on the left. Uh, I, I don't think left and right uh, have, no, have something to do with uh, left wing and right wing. Uh, it's just position of the of the thing. The house on the left. If you look at the at the words be, uh, uh, under the, the house, you you can see capitalism, you can see communism, you can see democracy, you can see selfishness, egoism. You can see uh, uh, internationalism. Uh, you can you, you can see all these things you know mixed together. You can see also uh, uh, the word "juivry," which means something like Jewish uh, uh, speculation. Also, it's a stock market. Uh, What's this uh, uh, demagogy? At the, is that democracy in the center no, bottom? 
No, there is also democracy, but uh, demagogy means, uh, I don't know how to translate it. Wait. Uh, we have demagoguery. Demagogy. Uh, demagogy. Demagoguery, yeah. we say. Yeah. Um, but yes, and you have uh, what you have also. So you have a lot of uh, uh, things put together. Uh, you have also system, radicalism, system, uh, greed. You have greed. Avarice. Also. What? Avarice. It means greed. Yeah. Yeah. And on the, on the other side, you have the good friends, of course. Uh, and you have the word uh, school. Uh, uh, artisana means uh, craft. Uh, Paysannerie means uh, uh, peasantry. Uh, Legion means something like army, uh, discipline, order, épargne means uh, saving, courage, uh, and uh, you see travail, famille, patrie, which means uh, war, family, uh, fatherland. So you see that uh, for the this right wing, uh, uh, capitalism, socialism, uh, democracy, Jewish, everything is, uh, 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 for according to them, it's all the same, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, and it's very eloquent, eloquent image, I think. So the the government of uh, Pétain, they impose uh, uh, censorship, put the dissent in, in jail, they inis uh, and initiated the main structure of the uh, red redistribution of wealth system that we still have today in France. And Ayn Rand was referring to this government when in her journal she wrote. So I have the quote now because last time I, I haven't. So she referred to uh, dictatorship and she said could dictatorship. She, she didn't say could dictatorship because she said could it, but uh, in the context it means dictatorship. So could dictatorship happen in France? People would have laughed if uh, at you had you asked uh, such a question a year ago. Well, it has happened in France. France, the mother of freedom and of democracy. France, the most independent minded nation on earth. This is Ayn Rand speaking in, uh, uh, at the end of the event. So, anyway, since uh, the Nazi lost the war, of course, the collabor uh, collaborationist government was disintegrated and Pétain was accused by Charles de Gaulle of the crime of indignité nationale. Uh, it means uh, national unworthy, uh, unworthy I don't know how to pronounce it. Unwor unworthiness? Yes, exactly. So uh, I give you the, the, the Wikipedia article. People can check on Wikipedia to have maybe more uh, information of what it means uh, at the time. So Philippe Pétain finished in jail. And from the end of the war until the end of the 60s, to summarize, there was only one man on the right, Charles de Gaulle. The man who resisted against the Nazi, the hero who saved France, and it may be relevant to point out, to point out as an aside, that on the left side, on the left side, sorry, the French communists also resisted against the Nazi. So there was a kind of strange alliance between the right of Charles de Gaulle and the communist left. Charles de Gaulle was in power after the war most of the time, and he founded founded the last uh, uh, version of our republic. His policy was rather authoritarian and overall very statist. However, we were still in a democracy, in a capitalist framework. It is in no way a dictatorship. It's not a system comparable to totalitarianism. The rights of the individuals and basic freedom uh, were rather uh, respected on many aspects, but on some other aspects, industrial, for example, they were very under control of the state. So it's a kind of mixed system, different uh, from today's mixed system because it's not the same things that are controlled and are free. Uh, but yeah, above all, Charles de Gaulle defends uh, patriotism, the glory of France. He's highly, uh, a highly respected personality in France today. Now, so, would, do yeah. you think that uh, France would be better off if they were more in line with what Charles de Gaulle would want France to be doing today? Have they gone off the path of what de Gaulle would have wanted? I don't think so because uh, he was he was too much statist. 
in fact. He was he, he was really mixed because you know in in his government no in his uh, I don't know if it was his yes maybe in his government there was a man called uh, uh, Jacques Rueff who was an Austrian economist who was uh, uh, um, with um, kind of student of uh, Ludwig von Mises and Ludwig von Mises at that time said that uh, he was uh, happy that uh, Charles de Gaulle had uh, uh, people like that who who, who uh, put economy on the right track. But the, so there was good aspects uh, of in Charles de Gaulle and there was very, very bad aspect. So <clears throat> I would say no. I would say it's, you have to change the completely the, the philosophy because his philosophy was not actually really for capitalism. It was like... Yeah, I don't know how to qualify it. It's very uh, patriotism, but it's not bad patriotism. But it's patri patriotism above uh, above everything, ab above the right of the individuals. You know, it's kind of um, kind of collectivist somehow. Yeah. yeah. So but during that's... the time of Charles de Gaulle, the other right that I mentioned previously, the one uh, that collaborated with the Nazi, virtually disappeared. Or, or rather remain uh, discreet, <laughs> as you can maybe imagine, for reason you can imagine. And after the death uh, of uh, the Gaulle, the mainstream right will continue to claim the legacy of Charles de Gaulle. And in the 70s, you have a man named Jean-Marie Le Pen, who creates a new party called Front National, the National Front, uh, in fact, I don't know how to explain it, but it could correspond to what in the U.S. people call alt-right alt today. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I know that you maybe you you don't have the same uh, view of the alt-right that maybe some other people. But I don't know. It's just a sug suggestion. But Jean-Marie Le Pen managed to bring together people who were very different: former collaborationists, former pro-Nazi people who denied the existence of the Holocaust, but also formers, uh, former resistance fighter. Apparently, they were also a uh, former resistance fighter in his party. Uh, monarchists who were against the French Revolution, wanted to go ba uh, going back to monarchy. Anti-tax people, anti-capitalist people, anti-modern people, all kinds of nationalists and traditionalists from uh, uh, different... Uh, uh, um, different uh, people who did not feel represented in the mainstream political system. It was a very small party in the beginning, very underground and almost uh, insignificant at the time. And the specific credo of the Front National was to completely stop immigration. Jean-Marie Le Pen was regarded, of course, as racist, anti-Semitic and homophobic, but not only from the left also from, from the mainstream right wing who wanted to have nothing to do with this guy. Because, you know, they, they claimed the legacy of Charles de Gaulle and he wasn't in this uh, track uh, uh, at all. Actually, he was uh, uh, regarded as racist and so on by the majority of people and still, and still he is today. No, is he really racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic? Well, I'm not in his mind, so it's hard to say. Because obviously he always denied this accusation and didn't make too much explicit statement. I, I, I would say maybe semi-explicit, because it's forbidden by the law here. <laughs> but he, he did a lot of uh, borderline statement, statements. For instance, I will uh, I will give you some instance. He always defended uh, le Maréchal Pétain, whereas he was opposed to Charles de Gaulle when de Gaulle was uh, alive after the war. Uh, one of the most famous uh, statements of Jean-Marie Le Pen is to say that he, does not, he doesn't know uh, if the gas chambers actually existed and that anyway it is a detail of the Second World War, according to him. So he also said that during uh, uh, the war the Nazi occupation was not so bad. Uh, he also said openly that he believed in racial inequality. So you can interpret it as you want, but there is a huge, really a huge amount of very borderline stuff uh, that leads to think that the accusation against him 
might make sense somehow, and that it's not only leftist stuff. But of course, uh, uh, don't take my word for it. You, I invite uh, 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 you and the viewer to make your own uh, research to the extent that you can, because of course you, 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 can't, you don't speak French. Maybe on Wikipedia you can find some uh, basic information. I, I think you can have some basic information, for instance, and try to make your own judgment. But anyway, it's a well-known fact that in his public, in his audience, there were openly racist people, neo-Nazi, skinhead, uh, skinhead, and so on, um, etc. The problem is that uh, uh, the left accuse everyone who disagree with them of being racist, of hate speech, and so on. So when you actually have people who, for whom it might actually be appropriate, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. And in addition to that, when you have laws that limit the freedom of speech, you don't know what people actually believe. So that's the problem. Yeah. And so we, we should be careful with our racist bullets because eventually you'll yeah. meet a real racist. And when you meet a real racist, you need to have your racist bullets. Yes, I, I completely agree. And on economics, Jean-Marie Le Pen was also uh, against free trade, against globalization, against competition for protectionism. But on the other hand, for domestic economy, he was opposed to high taxes and to a state becoming too crushing in economy. But his main consideration anyway has always been immigration, more than economics. For him, economics was, uh, I don't know, a secondary topic somehow, it, means, it seems to be. Uh, so initially, the mainstream left, which was in power in France in the 80s, was not too uh, concerned about Jean-Marie Le Pen because he was too uh, minority and eccentric for everyone. Now, what happened is that in order to stay in power, the leftist government uh, with uh, President François Mitterrand, who was very, uh, uh, very cynical, with no real political conviction, uh, and uh, his, behavior, his behavior, uh during the, the war might be also suspect. But what happened is that he helped Jean-Marie Le Pen to gain visibility in order to raise the score of Jean-Marie Le Pen's party and thus lower the score of the mainstream right wing so he can stay first. You understand the tactics? So sometimes people used to say that it was François Mitterrand, the leftist, who created Le Pen somehow and consciously, just for tactics and cynical reasons. So. The minor uh, 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 right wing of Jean-Marie Le Pen started to grow, but still remaining a, a tiny minority against the mainstream right. And the mainstream right... <laughs> Couldn't we give the culture any credit at all? So the left has to take credit for a rise in um, questioning what's going on. Yeah. The left says, the left says nobody would have questioned what's going on. This guy wouldn't have ever gotten popular. If it weren't for us making him popular, uh, actually they didn't. Yeah, they didn't say uh, because now they admitted that it was a strategy. But at the you know at the time it was not for a long time. It was like a taboo to say that it was the left who uh, helped uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen to rise. In what way did they help him? I mean, I'm sus I'm suspicious of the narrative because I wonder if okay. it's if it's not the case that people were just starting to wake up and say uh, uh, what's going on you know we need a different we need a different direction this isn't our society's not working this way it, I, you know maybe that's what was actually happening and the leftists are saying no no people aren't waking up and questioning things it's just that uh, we had this problem on the left and we accidentally created a monster we didn't mean to it's our fault uh, I think uh, you can be right, uh, but I think it's it it could be both because the 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 the, the leftist you know of the time they admitted now that uh, François Mitterrand is dead now, and the people who work with him admitted that uh, he had like he was uh, uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen was almost unknown, and uh, François Mitterrand the the president he he uh, he called the. Um, the the television and say you know you have this guy uh, 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 he he has a politi maybe you should invite him uh, in your show etc etc but 
because he was never on TV before. Nobody heard about him. Nobody gave a shit about about him before. You know, it was like a very uh, eccentric uh, thing. So, but maybe, and but yeah, some. Yeah, I will. I would not not uh, deny what you think because I will say that uh, uh, it can, it, there is there can be several factors factors involved involved, but um, the mainstream right uh, has always said and make it very clear that it shared no values with Jean Marie Le Pen that he was a racist, anti-Semitic, and so on. Uh, and uh, but when, yeah, when Jean Marie Le Pen was invited in the media, he was very badly treat, treated. But you're right that in the fact that meanwhile uh, uh, there, are be, there has been more and more immigration coming mainly from North Africa, the countries which were previously French colonies, and uh, there are more and more areas uh, around the big cities in France, what we call uh, banlieue where most immigrants uh, uh, go to live, that have uh, more and more problems. And that, uh, there was also another event. It is the fall of the Soviet Union. Many people understood at that time that communism was dead. And the Communist Party, which was still very important in the 70s and the 80s, 80s it was around uh, 20% in elections, uh, this party was starting to shrink and so many former communists went to Jean-Marie Le Pen's party to protest against the mainstream system. A big part of the people who supported uh, who support this party previously supported communism. And for example, I have a very uh, specific example, uh, which is well known. Uh, at the end of the period of uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen, at the end, at the head of this party, there was uh, in his campaign, uh, in his campaign team a man quite known in France named Alain Soral. And uh, uh, I give you uh, the Wikipedia article about him. He wrote uh, uh, some speeches for Jean-Marie Le Pen. He's a Christian. He's a former communist who is still today an admirer, an admirer of uh, Chavez, Putin, Fidel Castro, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the dictator of Iran. Uh, who is deeply uh, and openly anti-American, deeply anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-capitalist. Uh, he believes in all the theory of the 9-11 conspiracy and the Holocaust that had never existed, all the conspiracy shit. Last time, uh, when I spoke about the French right, right wing with the conspiracy uh, theorist and anti-Semitism, it is represented by this man who is totally out of the media, but very popular on the internet today, especially among young nationalists and young Muslims. He makes a connection between far right and Islam. He describes himself as a French national socialist and praises uh, today North, the North Korean system. And he regrets uh, the fall of Soviet Union. And you can check uh, 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 Wikipedia if you want to know more about uh, uh, him. Yeah, he's an all-around bad guy. He says, as part of the debate on la cite in French schools, what is that? The, the debate of? La, la, siete, la laicite. Ah, la laicite. In yeah. French schools, Soral, he claims you know to what? prefer the veil to thong wear, to thong underwear. Yeah, laicite, it means uh, secularism. Okay, the debate on secularism in French schools. He prefers that the veil. He prefers the veil to thong underwear. So, uh, yeah. it's conservatism of some kind, then. Yeah. <laughs> so now we fi finally arrive uh, at Marine Le Pen, the daughter of Jean Marie Le Pen. And I want to stress an important point because I have seen uh, sometimes this confusion. You, uh, do not confuse Marine Le Pen and Marion Maréchal Le Pen, who came uh, to the Trump con convention last year. Marion Mar Maréchal Le Pen is the nie uh, niece of Marine Le Pen. There are two different people with slightly different ideas, more or less the same, but a little bit different. Okay, and uh, so Jean-Marie Le Pen started to be old in 2011. 
So it was Marine Le Pen, his daughter, who succeeded him at the head uh, of his party. So Marine Le Pen has long claimed to be uh, in the continuity of her father. And when her father was uh, at the head of the party, she supported him uh, all the time. Uh, she was friend with Alain Soral at the time. However, when she took the lead, uh, uh, she wanted to give a more uh, respectable image of the party. She wanted to stop, be, to stop being called Nazi and racist all the time. So first, she made statements saying that she did not have, she, she do not have the same view of the Second World War as her father, that she was not of the same generation. And what she did, secondly, is that she excluded from the party all the people who had explicit, explicitly racist, neo-Nazi, etc. Be, behavior that had previously been accepted by his father. And his father, by the way, regrets that his daughter has excluded uh, uh, these people. So she eventually uh, takes her distance with uh, Alain Soral as a person, but she kept and developed uh, from him his statist and anti-capitalist ideas. So she continued to talk about uh, immigration, of course, but she spoke much more of social and economic is issues holding uh, uh, ideas much more socialist than uh, her father on these topics. So the main accusation that Marine Le Pen made against the mainstream political parties was not only about immigration issues, but also, and perhaps, perhaps even more, uh, uh, about being ultra-liberal in the European, European sense of the word, i.e. to be much uh, for capitalism. Why, while she claims to be much more statist and collectivist than all the other parties, including the radical left, because it is not seen as a shame to be statist in France, <laughs> quite the contrary. So, except about immigration, she has no big difference with the communist and the radical left, and she always tried to seduce them, you know, by making this association that the French right wing make between postmodernism and capitalism, saying to the left, in a sense, you see, uh, your leaders advocate immigration, open border for human and products. It's all capitalism. And I offer you uh, social protection by the state, government spending, and I'm the real champions of the worker and of the people. This is uh, basically her speech. And by the way, uh, when her father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, was asked uh, 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 today if he regretted that uh, his daughter was more statist uh, than he was, he, repl he replied something like, oh no, the, circun the circumstances were, uh, uh, are different now. At the time, uh, there was the Soviet Uni Union, things were different. So you can see that uh, for him, there, was, there is no principle uh, involved here. So, yeah. Now, do you think that France would be better off if they went the direction of Marine Le Pen and she took power and was able to reshape the state? Or do you think that she's just totally mistaken and it's all, I mean, she's not perfect, but do you think she's any better than what's going on? Or do you think it would just be a different shit show? Uh, honestly, I, I think she's worst. She's, it's not different shit. I think she's really a disaster, to be honest. I'm not, she's so much, uh, it's, uh, as I say, she's exactly like a communist. The only difference is uh, about immigration, but the, you, you remove uh, uh, the, 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 the subject of immigration, it's just a, a, a regular communism. <laughs> Do you think that it's important to stop immigration today? Me? To, yeah. me personally? Uh, I, if you ask me my personal opinion, I think... I'm not very, I'm not, I don't have a definitive answer on this topic because uh, it's a very difficult topic. I'm starting maybe to change my mind about this topic. Uh, but um, I cannot tell you, I, I, I think, yes, I, I'm not for open border uh, fully, like uh, no border, everybody is welcome, can come without any, uh, any, uh, any rule, any law. But no, I'm not, I'm not for that. 
Uh, I'm not. I don't, I'm not sure that uh, to stop fully immigration is also uh, uh, something. Uh, of course, you have a, a specific context today. You have a context in Europe which is uh, complicated. Honestly, uh, it's. I cannot tell you a definitive answer on this topic. I, I'm still thinking about about this topic. But wh what I tell you about uh, uh, Marine Le Pen, honestly. I think I am objective. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want that you think that I just build a narrative that for to to give you the impression that I want to. Uh, it's not like a criticism of Marine Le Pen. It's really what it is. Uh, the, of course, yes. The problem is that you can not really since you cannot speak you can speak french you cannot check everything what i said but you have i don't know all the information you can get in english yeah anyway. I'm, I'm sure we've got some objectivists out there who speak french and they'll probably uh be interested in looking into it a little more but so yeah. on the whole you're saying that the whole french political scene is a mess from one end of the spectrum to the other. There are no really fundamentally good ideas. Anybody who gets into power is going to be a disaster. Yes, more or less. Okay. <laughs> more or less, because uh, I think, you know, some some are really the worst than others. And I think Ma Marine Le Pen was... And it's not only the ID that she has. She's also not very competent. In, it's uh, when you see her debate with uh, uh, Macron, she, she 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 did not she she was not uh, she did not mastered the subject. You know, she was like she discovered the the subject. You know, it was very strange. Even you know, even the people, uh, her audience, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, who are who have the same ID that than her don't like her because because of her incompetence uh -huh. you know but so if, well, and Poor just friends. Uh, and while uh, Marine Le Pen uh, was at the head of the party her father continued to make a statement that that sound very much like racism anti-semitism homophobic which embarrassed much the, the strategy of Marine Le Pen to make this party a respectable party, able to govern, etc. So Marine Le Pen excluded from the party her own father, the creator of the party. Yeah. And now they, are, they have been in conflict since that time. She didn't like uh, when her father praised uh, Le Maréchal Pétain, so she chose to be with the people who claimed uh, um, the legacy of Charles de Gaulle, and this is this is quite new and unusual for this party, but Charles de Gaulle is a popular and uncontroversial figure in France. Now he's like a god. Even the left claim the legacy of Charles de Gaulle today, because it's so uh, it's so popular. And so the party of Marine Le Pen was still a minority in the right wing until 2000, uh, the last election, 2017. Uh, what happened in this year is that everyone thought that the mainstream right wing would come back to power after the disaster of the mainstream left. <clears throat> the main candidate uh, of the mainstream right uh, was called uh, François Fillon. He advocated rather uh, pro-liberty ideas. He focused his, his speeches pri primarily on the reduction of the state and also fighting Muslim terrorism. So he was, maybe he was not so bad, but the problem is that you could be su suspicious because he was prime minister between 2007 and 2012, and his government did not really implement uh, such a policy. But anyway, Francois Fillon was eliminated because during the campaign he was accused of having uh, diver diverted public money in his past for the benefit of his wife. So. This has never been really proven, as far as I know, but suspicion uh, has eliminated, sorry, elimi elimi ha, sorry. Eliminated? 
he has eliminated him from the race anyway. Yeah, I mean, they do that a lot, I'm afraid. The left um, finds some legalistic thing on somebody on the right and they get them taken down. But they don't enforce the same stuff on the left. I mean, people give, there's some limit on the amount you can give to political parties because of free speech protection garbage in America. And so they find anybody who's given more than $2,000 and they put them in jail. Uh, but they don't enforce it to people on the left. The left give goodles and oodles of money uh, illegitimately, and they never go and enforce that. I totally agree with you, but you know what? In this case, the, this uh, uh, affair comes from his own party. It was the, the, the people from, uh, uh, with whom he, he was in power uh, uh, previously, they, because there was a competition, you know, the, like in the United States, you know, the Republican, uh, 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 you know, you have a... Uh, um, Ted Cruz uh, versus, or Lion Ted versus Trump? Yes, you have all the Republicans uh, who, are, who, who, who are in competition, and it, and it was because of that. Mm. <laughs> and so, but when, I don't know if you have seen the debate between uh, Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron, but honestly, she was really uh, ridiculous. But I, I, believe me that I say it very objectively, even the supporters of Marine Le Pen recognize it, and even Marine Le Pen herself has recognized it, recognized it that she was very bad at, at, at this debate. She did not propose anything positive during the debate. She always evaded and only accused uh, Macron of being uh, ultra-liberal, meaning for capitalism. She confused the subject. She wanted to spend a maximum of public money without wor worrying uh, how to pay. Uh, Emmanuel Macron completely dominated her. And the closest collaborators of uh, Marine Le Pen left the party after the, the, the debate, saying explicitly that it was because mm, of the I debate. Don't like kind of the military. There is a version of the debate on YouTube uh, with English voiceover. Or is it is it good? Is it reliable? Do you know? The translation was made uh, made live, uh, and I listened just a little bit, and it was not very good. But uh, you can have a ba basic aid ID, maybe. Okay. Was especially, especially the translator, because there was two translators, one translator for Emmanuel Macron, one translator for Marine Le Pen, and the translator of Marine Le Pen was not, not very good. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, it was not perfect. Huh. And, uh, <coughs> you know, I talk also about Marion Maréchal Le Pen, who was... Uh, Sorry. Uh, at the Trump conven convention, Marion Maréchal Le Pen. So she essentially uh, shares uh, the, her aunt's uh, ideas. It's a matter of uh, nuance. She's also overall uh, anti-capitalist, like the French far right, but less economically statist than Marine Le Pen, and prob probably more tolerant with racism, like her grand grandfather, Jean-Marie Jean Le Pen. It seems, but she's still very young, so you don't know exactly where she will she will she will go in. And uh, <clears throat> since uh, 2017, because of the failure of the mainstream right, Le Pen's party has become the mainstream right after 45 years of minority and underground political activism as a kind of uh, alt right or something. Today, she's um, much more accepted in the French media and much uh, less badly treated than in the past. Although most French people still uh, regard her uh, as a racist, given the history of her party and of her family. And the former mainstream right, overall, does not want to have anything to do with them, uh, uh, even today with a, a little few exceptions, some individuals, but it's very rare. In general, they uh, uh, put a line be between them and the party of Le Pen. No, I'm not saying that if you are pro-capitalism in France, you have to be on the left. I want to be clear. Uh, no, if you are pro-capitalism, first, uh, uh, you are very strange and unusual in France, <laughs> since everyone agrees that capitalism is evil, and you are just outside of those uh, left and right concepts, which are both statist concepts today. 
But you know, <clears throat> it, it occurs to me that that uh, there are certain groups of objectivists who who conceive of the United States the same way you're describing France. It's like without the ideas of Ayn Rand on the scene, the United States would still look a lot like France. But we've had the spread of Ayn Rand's ideas. Donald Trump's Red Atlas shrugged. He loves the Fountainhead. So we've had these ideas. We talk about them. They're on. They you know we had John Stossel do his series on greed and all the stuff John Stossel did. And these ideas are a big part of our culture now, and they're just not in France, right? Yeah, no, no, they are, yeah. So uh, that, I agree with you. France is what America would look like without Ayn Rand's ideas having spread, but Ayn Rand's ideas have spread in yes. America. <clears throat> uh, if, you're, like, if your frame of reference is that, uh, 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 like... On one hand, the more you are for liberty capitalism, the more you are on the right. And on the other hand, the more you are for socialism, statism, the more you are on the left. Th then, if it is your framework, Marine Le Pen is the left. And Emmanuel Macron is the right. Now, Macron, is he in favor of, of less government intervention in the economy, lower taxes? Yes, yes. In, overall, yes. Although oh, it depends, but because he's mixed, he's, he's very uh, centrist. But compared to all the other, yes, he's uh, uh, he's the only one who was who was like, uh, yes, we we have to ha uh, to have more liberty in the economy and more stuff like that. So it's not the the same f uh, framework in France. Um, but uh, uh, we we don't have this framework of uh, uh, socialism against versus capitalism. It looks like uh, these kind of issues are non-essential for most French people. It's like secondary issue. Uh, uh, the main issue in France is more like modernity versus tradition, or uh, open world versus France, or Europe versus the nation, or the elite versus the people. You know, and uh, either you are for max Marxist uh, socialism, either you are for kind of uh, French tribalism, national social socialism, if I may say. And almost all the, all parties are in competition to be the best opponent of capitalism. Somehow, yes. And if you if you're la living in France and you worry about immigration and about Islam but you're not a, a, a thinker and you seek for a group or a set of ideas that share your, con your concern for those issues, uh, everything you can find on the far right wing with uh, nationalism and so on will be anti-capitalist, anti-liberty, uh, anti-American most of the time, etc. And in those groups, uh, globalization, capitalism, man's rights, liberty, free trade, free market, all those things that come from America, uh, all that is also an enemy. Because for them, it is the cause of the troubles we have today with terrorism and Islam. Because according to them, since the capitalists uh, uh, travel all around the world and only want to make money, they don't care about uh, nations, and uh, they are in favor of immigration to have uh, cheap labor, labor, and the immigrants uh, take the job of the native, uh, and because of immigration, we have Islam and uh, this capitalist elite uh, uh, I was mentioning uh, doesn't suffer directly from uh, uh, Islam because they are disconnected uh, with the people. And because of those ideas of liberty, of man's rights, individualism, we have uh, postmodernism, which is the e ideology of the elite, of the capitalist, of the, me of the media, mainstream media. And that lead us to be tolerant with Islam, otherwise you are a racist. You see, it's all connected. They wouldn't understand if you dissociated those things. It is the framework of thinking of the far right here. And they take it for granted. It's just obvious. It's almost like a, a starting point. Like, uh, uh, um, um, let me stress this. Those connections are not really something that they argue. They are self-evident in their thinking. So if you disconnect... Oh, oh, crap, just a second. I'm, I might, we're going to have to uh, discontinue here because I have to run. I'm sorry. Um, 
We'll have to make this part one, Gio. I have to go. Um, okay. Thank you very much, and, and we'll we'll do this in the next few days or something if we can. And I'll put this out, and we'll continue. Hey, what's up? All right, thanks, Logan.